Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Michael Eng, and today I will be giving you a first lecture on calculus. But before I do, let's answer some questions. What is calculus, and how is it different from the rest of mathematics? What calculus is the mathematics of change. And regular old school mathematics, geometry, algebra, pre-calculus are all static, while calculus is dynamic. Allow me to illustrate. Take, for example, we have a rectangle, a very concrete example. And this is what will be the static situation. I want to find the area of the rectangle. We can use the formula area equals base times height, a constant base and a constant height. But what if I want to find a situation, what if I'm in a situation where I want to find the area underneath the curve? Let's draw a little graph over here. This will, re this will represent the first quadrant. And I have a curve above this x-axis line. I want to find the area underneath this curve. Can I answer this question using the traditional method? No, I cannot. So now I have to apply calculus to find the area underneath this curve. This is the power of calculus, and this is why it is important. We remember in our third grade, third grade class, uh, slope is rise over run. I will use the variable m to represent rise over run. To break it down even further, rise over run is nothing more than y2 minus y1. Uh, let me clean that up for you. y1 over x2 minus x1. Notice that these two are only, it's merely the difference between uh, y's and the x, and can be shorthand written as delta y over delta x. Now that we understand the concept of a slope, we can understand the concept of a tangent line, which is nothing more than the slope at a single point. So let's recap. We know the definition of a slope, and we know the definition of a tangent line. And I want to find the slope at a given point. So let's cheat. I know the answer. The line is this, and this is my official tangent line. But I'm going to experiment with this. I know I need two points, somewhere between this point and somewhere along this line, because I need two actual points. Let's say it's over here, the second point. And we'll draw a line between here and the second point. This is my secant line. So continue to the experiment. Let's choose a point somewhere in between these two given points. Our new point is here, and our old point is over here. So let's draw a secant line from here to there. We start to see a little uh, similarity between the secant, new secant line and the tangent line. Let's bring it even closer. Now, if I were to bring this point closer and closer up to just in into infinity, just to a point where it's barely touching each other, I will find that the secant line equals the tangent line. Now you may be asking yourself this question, why bother with this if I can just choose this tangent line at that given point? Well, let's take a look at it algebraically. So why can't we just choose variables that are exactly on that point? Well, if I were to say that this point of y is 3 and our x is, say, 4. And they're both the same. So y1 and y2 is the same, and x1 and x2 is the same. Let's plug it into our equation and find out. So x y2 uh, is 3, and y1 is 3, divided by x2, which is 4, minus x1, which is 4. What we find is that we're dividing by 0, and we cannot do this. And this is why it's important to understand the concept of the approach, not the answer at that given point. And this is the concept of the tangent line problem. 